Hey guys, this week we're talking about all the fancy new apps on the Google Glass. We talk about password issues, and I have a momentary lapse of cord cutting faith. All that and more on the Awesome Cast. This edition of Awesome Cast is brought to you by PittsburghOnVideo.org. Check out the best videos from Pittsburgh all in one place. PittsburghOnVideo.org. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. I'm getting awesome. You're getting awesome. We're getting awesome. Yeah, that's what I said now. I'm getting awesome. You're getting awesome. We're getting awesome. Yeah, that's what I said. Hey, guys, it's a show where we get geeky, we talk tech, we talk about awesome things it's the awesome cast here from the studios here in pittsburgh pa i'm mike sorg at sorgatron on the twitter joining me as usual and on the couch in the studio is at chilla john chilla how hey. you doing not too bad what's up all right all right <laughs> what <laughs> i just remember well one I, I once again i didn't change our, our little subtitles there but your right things for reels that came in right things for reels oh the the, uh, the equal yeah the equal, equal jot is it <clears throat> um got it for the wife for her birthday came in yesterday actually it came in maybe yesterday somebody like said hey they gave it to the wrong house like at like 9 30 last night so that was well, at least you got it i mean at least that we got been, it i was yeah. kind of worried about it. it was a really weird ordering process but those don't remember um um that's the uh, so i was she wasn't able to do too much with it because it needs charged uh, and it was, wasn't doing enough with it um so she got the app on her phone app for windows is coming soon <laughs> so she couldn't windows get it. rt or just windows? uh i don't know i presume just windows windows so mm-hmm. that she can share her stuff because it's in the cloud so she's it's like, their cloud yes i think so oh, i don't wow. know i didn't look too much into it. i just like went on your recommendation mm-hmm. looked a couple things say hey is this something you think you'd be interested in and boom so but you know it really made sense because you talked about it and she said something really important to me uh, when she was talking to somebody uh, about writing, mm-hmm. and she wants to get back into writing a little bit more. Um, she's like, I just want to write. Sometimes I feel like picking up a pen. Sometimes I feel like doing it on a keyboard. But I want that ability to just write. So I'm mm-hmm. like, well, this seems like the perfect cross. Yeah, you can do it. Now or. she can pick up a pen, start writing, and it's digitized. Yeah. You know, like I think that's the really important thing is getting things digitized, getting them, you know, off of just a piece of paper in that you will lose mm-hmm. to be honest at least that's my experience um and nobody and loses anything no no of course not Never. of course not that's why I, that's not <laughs> why I put everything in the cloud at all um but anyways but yeah this is exactly the kind of conversations we have here um uh, but yeah check that out equal jot we'll, we'll probably have her down for some um uh thoughts on that in the future uh so uh, Let's get into, well, first of all, hey, you can find out more about us. We're over at sorgatronmedia.com. That's something that we do. Um, and you can also drop us a line. We're at AwesomeCast on Twitter. That's who we are. That's who we are. <laughs> and we're also on the Facebook. We're on the Google+. Plus. A lot of great conversations happening over there. Uh, you can find us. We're on iTunes. We're on your Roku via the Blip TV app. We're on YouTube. We're on Stitcher. Uh, go listen to us, all that kind of stuff. A lot of you guys I know watch on the Roku app, and that's really cool. I love what you guys you guys send me pictures of us on a big screen, which means we, I feel like I need to frame things differently if I'm on a 42 inch. Um, that's why we put it up. We got a big 30 inch something TV over here, old school styles. That's why we, we kind of get an idea of that. Uh, so uh, let's get into it. Uh, so if I can go first, Trilla, uh, uh, there's something pretty awesome that happened today. Like it felt like with Google Glass, of course, there's been some news coming out, but there's a new one. Uh, apparently, I'm going to be able to swap up to the Google Glass 2. Uh, there's going to be a lot of new kind of features with that. I'm, I'm excited that it's going to be compatible with my prescription glasses, so I'm going to be able to do something with that. Um, <laughs> sorry, Krause just said shoot me now. <coughs> Excuse me. He's just upset that Apple's better than Microsoft. So, um, um, but it's been quiet for a while. The last XE 11 update didn't have much added to it. Really, just some card stuff, something here or there. Not really much to it. In fact, they took away part of my Twitter functionality for a few days and kind of pissed me off. Um, but I believe this was today they did this. They announced the GDK. 
presume that stands for Google Developer Kit. I, I found this out at like 4.30 today. I had this whole other thing for Awesome Thing of the Week. This just trumped all of it, so I'm, I'm diving headfirst into some of this information right now. But along with that, and I'll pull this page up now, uh, for a while, um, and, and if, you, you know, if you've seen before, when you go to uh, Google Glass, uh, your setup, like most of that interface, of course, happens in the web browser, showing now for the video version. Uh, so you get this page with all your squares, you get all your contacts, and you get the apps you can turn on and off, right? But now, uh, and you've had this for a little bit too, they have a separated uh, glassware tab. Glass development kit. Glass development kit? Not Google. Oh, that's what I meant to say, I'm yeah. sorry. Uh, but they have a, a, a separate glassware section here, and they've added a ton of stuff today. Um, there's a good bit more than there used to be here. Well, now, does it look like, and, and I apologize, I usually don't go through this kind of store because I don't have the glass, but does it look like the apps that are coming in, are they coming in more third party or are they coming in direct from vendor? So are you seeing, I, I saw up there, there was like a Tumblr, there was the mm -hmm. Evernote. Mm -hmm. Are they coming in direct from Evernote well, or are they coming from... I think, I feel like the, one, the ones that, Evernote's been there since the last version. Take a note what it was mm -hmm. added to Glass as part of the develop, uh, as part of the update last, like in XE10 uh, mm -hmm. a month or two ago. Um, so I think there's a little bit of, you. we got our thing in your store, but there are plenty of applications that you've been able to use up until now that do a little bit more that you go to their site, they do the connection with Google, and then that comes in. Like you give permissions, just like when you hit permissions for Facebook, you're doing the same thing. It just knows to go to glass because it's something they're doing on their end. And then it will show up, show up in here. Uh, I should have a few of those. Maybe I don't. Hold on. Oh, uh, and, and the ones you see in here that don't have icons, like my send to Google Glass, which actually is a um, Chrome extension i can send pictures and stuff i think we talked about this on the show recently silica simple wing um and and i had a few others but i was clearing house on this uh ironically you know a, a couple days ago so it, it kind of cleared cleared house for a lot of this kind of stuff coming up so i enabled a few of these let me start with the kind of the low level ones here uh real quick and i brought the google uh nexus 7 so i can do the screencast and uh, hopefully show up show off a little better what's going on here so let me get that going screencast so this is the other thing so before whenever you installed quote installed something it would send kind of a panel and if you wanted to go back and access it you had to pin it which would pin it to and again just a little bit of a refresher you know okay here's the interface there's all my fingerprints i guess and remember you go this way and there's all my tweets this is your timeline of things that have happened right and you see that thing we'll get into that for for a second uh, but if I wanted the, a quote app to be on here, I had to pin it and it would end up on this side, which is where all my Google Now cards are, right? So I was kind of wondering where things showed up. So when you do install something, when you turn, on, when you turn it on, uh, on that page I showed you, you'll get a, something like this. And it'll say, like for this was something called Spellista, which is apparently a word game. I literally just installed this right before the show, so I haven't even been able to look at it. But... This will happen. It says it was installed, you know, eight minutes ago, received this. Uh, and now, then you don't do anything. I can't click on that and, and know what to do with anything for it. But here's the cool part. So I can go, OK, Glass. Now, if I look down, I have new things. Show a compass. So now, we just add functionality to our voice in this. And now I have a compass that will turn with my head. Oh, and this is interesting. I didn't notice this before. Uh, apparently in this direction is a Permani Brothers in 5.7 kilometers and a Tyrannosaurus Rex in 7.5 kilometers. I don't know what the T-Rex... Uh, <laughs> I, 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 like, what, what? I don't look in the other way. Like that, that's the direction of, of I don't Google think it's exact, because I just... I don't know. Yeah, I don't think it's completely exact. But, uh, but, you, but you get the idea. So, um, let's see. I can also... Well, now... I have to actually go in and stop. Okay, glass. And I'm going to go down here, and I see I can start a stopwatch. And now I got a stopwatch, and it actually dinged as it did the countdown. So another cool thing, I can stop that. Now here's the cool one. Okay, glass. And I can say 
translate this. This is one called Word Lens. And I actually have, and I'll show you here on the screen, I have this sign that I downloaded so I have something nice and big that's in Spanish. And let me see if I can coordinate this right. So you see, I have this, it, it's turning on the camera, and I have this little space. Now let me line this up. I don't know if you can see that there. And you see it on the fly, it translates space closed, danger, entrance alone with permission, uh, which is, I know, not completely exact probably, but still pretty cool that they do at least that. Now, word lens is something that, and I'll try to look away and look back so you can kind of see the change. There you go. This actually isn't a new application. They've had this on the iPhone for a bit. I think it was, it was it's the same one, word lens. Mm -hmm. um, so now I can, for instance, there's a lot of Mexican products in my grocery store at the top of the hill now um, that I can't read. Now I can read them, you know. Uh, what if you go to a foreign country or something else? You know, what if I go to uh, Montreal, you know, and everything's in French? I'm, I'm presuming this will do French as well. Now you just need to hold, you know, look at something and it'll translate. I think this is the first major thing that delivers on the promise of Google Glass is that whole kind of extra informational thing, you know. And the first, like, kind of visual cool thing to show off. You know, much like, you remember we had to dig in to get the 360-degree uh, mm -hmm. picture? Now we have all the stuff that people have been working on these last few months to actually show off what this thing can do. Before, it's been like, well, I can get tweets. Well, I can take pictures. I can take video. Now it's like, now I can do this. Now I can do this. Now I have a, a compass. I can I can walk around and say, hey, which way's north? You know, um, uh, and I noticed on a compass, there's a read aloud on there. So it reads as you switch direction? Yeah. I, well, I don't know. I, I haven't tested it. But, You're now but, facing east. It's like standby REM. But I'm thinking, yeah. <laughs> but I'm thinking about like for handicap <clears throat> accessibility or something, you know? Mm -hmm. I, and plus, I think, I think it, it also goes to sleep because I know it's like I touch it and it comes back up into the compass. So the application stays running, like kind of in the okay. foreground. So I think as you, maybe as you run <laughs> if, or walk mm -hmm. or something, if you want to go just by that, or maybe you're walking through the woods and now I have to go north, you know? Because GPS, or, uh, uh, you know, GPS road directions aren't going to help you too much at that point. You know, if you're walking the trail, you know, like, like I was last week, mm -hmm. you know, for, 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 for a uh, thing we're shooting. But, and, and I noticed, and even just looking here, there's stuff for running, there's stuff for cycling. Uh, I grabbed a couple of things. I, I noticed my stream, I'm following the right communities, I guess, uh, bump, you know, has, has a ton of stuff. Here is uh, Ride with Strava which is a, a bike riding tracker. Uh, it gives, gives you an idea of everything. There's jogging apps that are popping up now. Um, I think this is going to be a little bit closer because it, the, the problem has been people get them, get Google Glass or let their friends use Google Glass for a bit. And after a little bit, they say, okay, now what do I do? But I think, I think more of the idea has to be, what can this thing do for me? You know what I mean? Like, like, what information do I want to come to me? Like, more me just sitting here doing X, Y, and Z. But now I think there's more of those things now exist. You know? Yeah, I'm trying to think of the different different things that I would personally want. <clears throat> I mean, trying to like the Twitter feed I want coming to me. But as far as like walking around, I guess if. But I thought it already did it. Where if you're in a city, you can say I need directions to wherever, it and it's gonna put the arrow up. I guess to feed me information. I mean, what? I mean, I don't have it. So, yeah. like, what do you feel like you're missing out of either in time notification or something you want it to be able to do? For me, it's been pushing more information out. Like, I feel like that. Okay, you want to like, push more information? Yeah, like, like I want to. You know, we talked about before. In order to interact with Twitter, you have to start with a picture. Mm -hmm. or you have to respond to somebody like you need a starting point you can't initiate just with yeah like say i want to tweet i yeah. can't say tweet this you know and just got a message oh i was wondering if it was an application can you tweet through email because can't you email twitter and they'll convert it to a tweet there's actually not an email function on this there's a reply once again i can't I thought you said you you could say because um who was somebody did it they were sitting here it was aj so to email Chilla. 
send a message to? Oh, uh, maybe that was it. Send a message to Chilla, but I, I got it in an email. Mm-hmm. Depends on how your messages are set up, because I think okay. send a message to with your do SMS if mm-hmm. you're set up with that, which I don't have it linked to my phone to do that. Um, or maybe I'll send a message through Google Plus, and then that could link through to your email. So, um, but yeah, so the, the again, this is just the verge. Like I'm literally just just dove into this because as I finished my work up for the day, trying to get down here and get ready for this stuff, uh, I I realized. Holy crap, they just added a bunch of stuff. Um, real quick, <laughs> give an idea what kind of stuff they've added. Uh, let's see, the if, the if this, then that. Okay. So there's a lot of stuff you can probably do with that. So, th- and that's the interesting thing. So, so if this, then that. I- I'm really interested in seeing how much, how they start really interacting with, yes, I know. with the um, kind of wearable tech. Yeah. Because one of the things is the new... Is it the up? What's the one that kind of like links around your hand and it kind of like cu- like comes back around each other? The is that jo- the Jawbone one? Yeah, I think so. Okay. That they now integrate with them. So you can actually create a recipe that says when you're home, when you like walk in your house, if the time's between this and this, turn on the lights. When you get up in the morning, they'll interact with Wemo, which is I think Belkin's home automation stuff. When you get up and out of bed, it'll automatically kick on your coffee maker. So, like, the same thing with class. You can make it where if I'm home, do this. Or Mm -hmm. if I have, like, I I could just really see the harnessing the power of kind of Google's theory of we're trying to free you up so you can do more fun stuff. So, I could see it really playing on that where you could completely automate tasks and Certain things, if you're in a certain place at a certain time, it could it could do certain things. And like even if it was, and I know it would be a pretty complex statement, but if I have a meeting and I'm and it's three to five minutes before that meeting, and I am not within so much distance of that meeting, email all recipients, estimate the time that I, it's going to take <laughs> me to get there, and let them know. Wow. But that, but that's one of the things that. I can't remember who it was who and it might be Google that was working on that. Like they're working on Google now where it knows where you're at, it knows where you're going. If you're going to be late, they want to be able to broadcast that mm-hmm. message out. And I'm starting to see some of that. I noticed uh actually I noticed I kind of screwed up the meeting location to begin with, but I I went early. I I said okay, I'm going to give myself 20 minutes to get over there. I know it takes 7. Um but so I got a message probably about a half an hour before my meeting that says uh, you should leave by at least this time in order to get there. Mm-hmm. You know, which is the first time I've seen that. Uh, and it's also supposed to play into uh, traffic. Yeah. So, like, I could really see. I'm. I already use. I make sure I put locations. If it's a new place, I make sure I put locations in Google Calendar because I know when I pull up my Google Now uh, on my phone, I, all I have to do is say, "Oh, that looks like the place." Get directions, and I go. You know, or I can keep an eye on it through the morning and see, okay, what is traffic doing? You know, is traffic building up? Uh, uh, oh, uh, you know, it's rush hour. It says it takes about 35 minutes to get there. And about a half an hour later, it'll all turn green and say, oh, it actually only takes 20 minutes. But I'll plan for that bigger problem, you know. Uh, so I'm starting to work my world around what Google is feeding back to me. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm getting more and more stuff on my phone itself to get that information. Um, it's been a really interesting, uh, situation. <laughs> Wheels is really mad that I'm talking about Google Glass because he received an invite and can't afford it. So, <laughs> so eh. um, but yeah, I, I think this is the point where it's going to start showing, you know, its abilities um that it's not gonna be oh i gotta go this and do this weird thing because i i have a handful of apps that i wanted to try uh crystal shopper was one there was some star Trek chess game or something that somebody made um and every time they loaded and it seemed like they were doing it in a backdoor way uh, and it was just me i go to a browser click the thing and it, it connects with my google account and that should connect everything right mm-hmm. uh but it would crash every time it came on glass again it's early it's beta maybe that has something to do with it but this seems like you know i have a nice collection of things here 
that Google says, hey, this works, we verified it. And it, it's not a huge thing, but it's a nice variety. You know, a lot of news feeds kind of stuff, a lot of, you know, like I said, they, they added, what, a stopwatch, a timer, a, a compass. So now you're starting to see some of that functionality that you get standard on your phone kind of pop up in here now. Do you think there'll be, like, it, is there a maximum number of, like, the cards you can have, or is there a maximum number of... of not that much. Perhaps you can. I'm load. pretty sure, like as far as cards, like the history cards, the mm -hmm. timeline that goes that way. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure that goes until the first, the oldest thing that's on your headset. But I okay. wonder how far that goes back for something like tweets or something. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's only. Maybe that's only since the last time you turned it on. I never really. I never thought about that before. Just going back and be like, hey, see how, how far can I go? And and I, you know, if you go back, and I'll pull it up so you can kind of see what that looks like. I just pull. I just pushed back eight, eight hours ago. So and you probably see on here and you see it kind of like, you know, but now you only have a subset of tweets, right? Uh, yeah, these are all my notifications. There's okay. emails in there too and everything. So I'm back 19 hours. Looks like I maxed out at 19 hours. Okay. Now, is that just when the last time this thing kicked off? Cause you think this thing kicks off every once in a while because yeah. the battery dies. Like it just happened, you know, um, because I'm always somewhere and, oh, well, Barry's out for the day. I'm done for now. You know, no, no big deal. Mm -hmm. You know, I have no problem with that. Uh, so maybe that's the reset point. But I'm actually kind of surprised I can't go back any further and at least brings up pictures because I don't generally delete the pictures off of this thing and videos and everything because um, I don't go through like at once maybe. After a long time, I got about halfway through the memory on this thing, which is 12 gigabytes that you have. Um, but I offload them in iPhoto, but I just leave them on, you know, just as a, just to make sure they got up into Google plus or, or something just in case, uh, as a backup to my backup really. Um, so, uh, so I, I think, it, I think it's definitely coming along I, as we get closer, you can kind of see the ramp up, right? Um, they just opened it up. You know, again, there was the, you can invite a friend kind of things went out. Um, now uh, apparently you can go sign up and get in line now. For the explorer program okay so it's not <clears throat> as close as it used to be so there's definitely a ramp up here it's interesting that they brought in this so much at the price point that they have but maybe they're going to bring it down after all the originals get their new one or, or something I, I don't know because it's still definitely not a consumer product you know I, it's still going to be a certain level of people are going to pay the fifteen hundred dollars in order to do this thing um at this point and i i kind of question like if you're going to jump on it although they are saying end of 2014 now keep sliding keep sliding well i guess if, if they're if they're getting traction and i think it's going to be i think there i think there's a lot of things that play into that you're going to have to get to the point where a you're gonna have to get the price point down so you are gonna have to continue to redo builds to come in with cheaper equipment mm -hmm. you're gonna have to get the police and whatever, like all the legal issues worked out. And I think this is one way that Google gets around a lot of stuff with the FCC is, oh, it's a test. Oh, mm -hmm. it's a prototype. I mean, I don't think I, I don't think Google Fibers has FCC approval. What? Really? Because I think it's it's a beta and it's a pilot. I don't think they have to have full approval. Hmm. And and they're basing it on the demand of the city wanting it there. It's not like like they don't have to go through all the things that like when Comcast goes into a market or or when Verizon wants to bring fiber into a market where Comcast already exists, all the red tape that goes around that, because there's the difference of the community saying we want this and it's it's a it's a beta. I mean, Google at any time could probably shut down Google Fiber and say, you guys are done. Mm -hmm. we're, we're wrapping this up. I mean, they've they've done it with um, what was their feed? Reader. They they did it with Reader. Really, you're just gonna yeah. compare every Google product could be the next Reader? Yeah, but it's not just Reader. It's what was the one before? What was the Wave? Wave. I mean, if if it if it doesn't catch and they can't monetize it, they're not going to move forward with I it. I think there's a difference between saying, "Hey, this free thing we've been giving you, you know, we're mm -hmm. going to take it away," versus, "Hey." You guys all paid this much money for 
Fiber and Google Glass we're going to take away from you. I mean, it's one thing, and this thing takes its lifespan and say, hey, we're not going to update it anymore mm -hmm. um, or something like that. But you can't. But, and, and, but those those products, I, I, I don't I, think, I think they'll get, get rid of. To, when you get to that consumer level like they are with Fiber, with Google Glass, with something else, again, like, this is not consumer. Let me make clear, this is not a consumer product yet. This is a test product at this point. Mm -hmm. We're explorers, you know, and, 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 you know if, for whatever the context that is. They get to create what that context is, right? Because there's never really been a program like this before that I can think of, you know, um, but uh, I'm sorry, you're saying, I'm just saying, I, I think they need to get the acceptance built up. Yeah. And in that time, think about all the, everything they're learning along the way mm -hmm. with the Explorer. I mean, they could, if they're going to continue to let people in the Explorer program and they're going to continue to release new versions of the glass, I don't see what you could, you know what, just say, we're going to fully release it in 2020 and let everyone <laughs> just keep buying and become a part of the Explorer program. And, and as maybe, maybe as the price, as the price falls, they open up more seats. I mean, is it that big of a deal if they pushed it out? I mean, how long here? And, and you'll have to Google this cause I don't know the answer to it. How long did Google or Gmail last in beta? Hold on. <laughs> or Google it. Okay, oh. Glass. Google, how long was Gmail in beta? This isn't going to work. Sorry, I'm reading. It's not reading it to me. <laughs> uh, yeah, that doesn't really say anything there. Oh, wait, it went up. Uh, the next page was Wikipedia for Gmail. Uh, in invitational only beta release on April 1st, <laughs> 2004. Uh, went public February 7th, 2007. So that's, so in, well, that's like three years. Yeah. Under three years. So I don't understand what the big deal is. Yeah. I mean, obviously there are people. How many? And, and I don't know if the Wikipedia shows you a graph of over time during beta, how many people joined Gmail, but it wasn't small numbers. No. I mean, and, and that, and it's not like it, it was back. It's not like when they left beta, they were out. It's not like during the beta, they kept it where every person gets like 10 or a hundred invites. I mean, they were letting people just sign up willy nilly. I think after the first year. So, so what's the big deal? I don't, you can leave it in beta for the rest of the, I mean, I'm sorry, it's getting to the point now and, and, and I hate to say it. Okay. We've had the iPhone for a month and a half, almost two months. Mm -hmm. And we're on 7.0.4. About to beta 7.1. <laughs> when beta 7.1 came out, you have the PlayStation that launched with a blue light that flashes that they they're not even it, does, it sounds like sony's not even a hundred percent sure what it means <laughs> um they give you like eight different things to troubleshoot you have xbox pushing off and i'm not i'm not trying to put put down any specific company notice i I'm a, everybody's screwed. i'm an apple i'm an everybody's apple fanboy I'm, I'm an apple fanboy at heart but I, and i started off with 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 their issues Microsoft has to release Windows 8.1. They're pushing back services on the Xbox, and, and it hasn't even launched yet. It it's, it's, de delivers this Friday. I mean, I, I'm sorry. Everything is a beta. Everything that we receive in the technology world from now on, I mean, from Kickstarters to real-life prod products, it, it's all beta. Mm -hmm. People want to get to market so fast, and I'm sorry, I'm going on a rant here, People get to market so fast that they don't pay attention to them. They're they're losing the attention of the masses, and and even if, and and now you have to think about okay, well, how much what what is like a relative massive amount of people? If you measure, I mean, is is like oh, what would the number be? Is four thousand people affected at the release of a product? It's kind of is the that, idea. That, it's kind of like the idea of the dog number? fooding. You know, yeah. I mean, I mean, how much do they, they you got to think? Yeah. How many hands do they get something like a PlayStation 4 and 2? And now a million went out there and now you get a percentage that's going to be a problem. It's going to be mm -hmm. big news because your small subset, who knows how Sony beta is again, mm -hmm. um, versus when, you know, dog fooding has been used in relation with Google a lot. 
they get they're walking around with Nexus phones and the new Androids and everything, you know, months before we even hear of them. You know, they're they're using their own stuff. They're fixing their own stuff. Um, so they have a built in tester that is pushing that stuff. You know, I mean, it's because the kind of company and the kind of people people that are there as well. Um, again, with Apple, you know, you got your engineers losing them in bars. Um, but how many of those can you get out there? So, yeah, I, I, I'm not surprised by any of that. And plus, you know, you're sending this off to China and you don't know what manufacturing, what mass manufacturing problems you're going to have. We're all when it comes to technology, you're right. We're we're, beta, we're always beta testing something, you know. Um, but yeah, but I think that just kind of goes with the territory. So, some are be some get better at others, and some uh, get to refine it. I, I, again, I, I I pulled this out. <laughs> I pulled this out and showed my grandfather the other day. I still walk around with that first iPhone, you know, just as a comparison point, and and see what iteration does, you know. Um, re remember when we remember when you had that first Android tablet we had down mm -hmm. here and we laughed because it wouldn't load get glue. Yeah. And now this is a fantastic <laughs> piece of hardware with the Nexus seven, you know? Um, yeah. It, it, yeah. It, it's, it's all a big beta test. So. I mean, I guess I look at it as even if, if you're part of something now, if you're, if you're a day one, <laughs> if, if you're a day one of anything, you're, you're, I think you should expect some kind of you're asking for trouble it's i don't think you're asking for trouble i think you need to be a little more understanding when something goes a little bit wrong well here's here's the other problem if you're a day one person like we know that as tech people that that deal with this stuff but as um soccer mom goes and gets the iphone on the day one because it's the coolest thing and and you know mm -hmm. they don't know that and they're like this is something like getting a toaster on day one. You know, it should work. But it's not a toaster. <laughs> uh, people are treating today's technology like a refrigerator or a toaster, mm -hmm. and it's not. It, it's it's, and it's more complex than a car. I mean, look at your car. You change the oil. You fill it up with gas. You maintain your car. People expect a phone. You not to have to maintain it. Same with computers. But and and it's and it's a problem. Mm -hmm. it's not an appliance mm -hmm. it, it's it's a computer i mean i keep it's... going to i i once again had to do a uh save the day thing with my grandfather and his computer because he had a lot of stuff going bad with it right um and i kept making the kind of relationship and say listen when you go out on the internet when you have your computer connected to the internet just like when you go walk down the street there's somebody that can pick your pocket and may try to do that and may try to trick you you know, this is just like going out wide in the open and you're not doing anything wrong per se. You are not doing anything wrong. Um, but this stuff happens. Uh, and, you know, it's one of those I go and I see all the malware things are going to pop up, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm uninstalling all of them from from the program, you know, control panel and all that stuff. Um, you know, and then there's me. I'm looking. I'm like. Why do I have the conduit search engine on all of my Macs? <laughs> if the, you know what I'm talking about, right? Mm. There's some malware out there, and I've seen this several times, that that replace, that pops up and sometimes replaces your search engine with the conduit.com Bing search, which changes all your search results. Um, it's not a virus per se, but it's one of those really crappy uh, malwares that keeps replenishing itself. Okay. Um, so somewhere along the line, and I actually have to run something on these guys over here to want, make sure it's not them. I uh, synced up my Chrome browser to a computer that had it on there, uh, so it said. So every time I opened Chrome, the one of the tabs was the conduit browser on every Mac, everything that mm -hmm. I have Chrome on. Even though it's probably coming from a Windows machine. Even though because it set it on a Windows machine, <laughs> and that sync, that change came over to everything. I point to all of the computers in front of me. Well, that'll be interesting because the thing about the propagation, and I mean, Windows 8, Windows 8, you can now sync, like, everything <laughs> between it. You can sync from art oh my to, God. to phone. Oh, my God. And to the but, Xbox. But just think about that. Oh, that is a nightmare <laughs> in the making. I'm just thinking, what if my, what if my, uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure what I, I think I know the computer it came from, and I know it's somebody else's computer that mm -hmm. I put an account on to do something. Um, 
So, but think about that. You think that. Think about if, let's say my wife is not as well-mannered on the internet as, you know, she is, right? And she's one of those people that gets all those that malware stuff. And she has a Windows 8 laptop. And now I have a couple Windows 8 machines, maybe because I got, you know, because I'm actually looking into like a certain like, you know, tower for down here so I can get a little power a little bit cheaper. And it's probably going to be Windows 8, right? Mm -hmm. And you log in, everything's that, that cloud login system now. And she gets, she gets coupon clipper 98 on her thing. And now coupon clipper 98's on my thing because it came over through my account when I logged in on hers. That's going to be insane. So you, it's like you screw up once with a virus. Now it's everywhere. Like that seems to just make sense, you know, more than anything. So I don't know. I, and I had that with Windows 8 to see how much, how bad of a problem that is. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine it's any. Better. Well, and it's going to get interesting because you're going to get to a point where, I mean, we saw it with Google Glass, right? People were embedding code in a <laughs> QR code that was then executing so now people are going to put something in a JPEG that they have as a background. Mm -hmm. So then it gets synced to the the to to with SkyDrive, which is really SharePoint behind the scenes. I'm sure they're scanning that content now. It's going to execute content that attacks Xbox Live. You want to make a name for yourself? Take down all of Microsoft with some kind of weird hack based on the synchronizing of machines on on, on their back end. Not that we're they're, suggesting yeah. any of this for real. <laughs> But, I mean, I mean, look at, but we've seen it happen before. We, we've seen it with Blaster Virus. I mean, that hit huge. I mean, you had the, the Melissa Virus, the I Love You, which were kind of script kitty Microsoft Outlook exchange stuff. But but when you're when you're attacking machines, making them reboot randomly and repeatedly, I I don't know. People are definitely going to have to think. And 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 what what makes me wonder. I'm sure something along these lines is, is probably more possible than we wish to think just due to the fact that we're, we're back on the bleeding edge, as, as Krauss is saying. I mean, Juggalo John, don't buy first gen early adopters, another name for beta tester. I mean, all these every all this stuff is new. This is this is not something that's that's proven. I mean, we're seeing it with Adobe. Their their cloud gets hacked and they lose a, a ton of a, a ton of user IDs, passwords. Yeah, so, that. And, and then I'm kind of concerned about that now. Someone actually figured out, I think, actually how they they cracked part of the um, encryption was they started looking for for strings that would would kind of sync up to a one two three four. They started, Five, six they started scenario or something. Yeah, they started fixing, figuring out the hash. So they right. figured out they they they've basically what they did. Uh, this is probably way so so they hashed the passwords, which I don't understand the hashing thing. It mm -hmm. basically turns like this letter into something else, right? Yes. So they figured out what the something else was. Mm -hmm. Like this letter is this character, let's right. say, and they figured. I guess they figured out the hash pattern. Right, and it's like. So many percent had one, two, three, four, five. So many percent had one, yeah. two, three, four, five, like six. A, isn't that like an infographic of everybody's password? Yeah, the, like a like a tons of people. Their password was the word password. <laughs> I mean, it was hysterical to see that. But it just well, goes yeah, to show that we're and plus Adobe is the most like everybody has Adobe. The mm -hmm. only the only the only more impressive database of people that don't want to deal with passwords is probably Microsoft Office's database. In the long run, mm -hmm. you, it, think about that. I mean, and uh, they don't even have. Well, I guess Creative Cloud is new too. But even just think Office three sixty five as people roll over to there. Sorry, you were saying. What was I saying? <laughs> oh, just back to. I mean, that's none of this is proven technology. It's all hackable. I mean, yeah. be careful with with what you do, and don't be surprised if one day stuff stops working. I don't know. Don't be surprised you can't use your password anymore because whoops, <laughs> you know, like I, I like I. Yeah, I was. It, it took me a second to realize. Oh crap! I have a Creative Cloud account. Oh, I should change that password. Oh, I didn't change all my. <laughs> was your password password? It was not password, but I'm pretty sure I. It's one of the. You have schemes in your head of passwords, right? Everybody does this, right? Okay, maybe not everybody. I do. I sure I do have schemes, this? but my I, like I know some people their schemes are based on the site they're logging into, and I do have schemes. 
I try not to use the same. I use, I have multiple passwords across multiple networks. My password complexity and scheme depends on what type of site it is and how much <laughs> access to my personal information. Okay. So like if you look at, I look at it from the fact like most of the majority of my social networks have the same password except for Google Plus because mm-hmm. Google Plus is part Links of the Google, it's, it's Google, which has my credit card info. Like if you, if you have, a, if you have access to my credit cards, you get a complex password alphanumeric it's 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 long Mm -hmm. and you're you're not it it, it's a bunch of nonsense characters that don't mean much um if it's something like bright kite i mean which you can have my crap yeah yeah exactly (laughs) or like or or four square i mean it's not a big deal and i'm not i'm not huge on using twitter and facebook etc authentication like, so my Pinterest, I have a Pinterest account that's under my email address. See, I live on the authentication side. See, I don't live on the authentication. Because now, once you have one, <laughs> you have them and all. And this happened to me. Because <laughs> somebody got into my uh, my Hootsuite. Right. That's authenticated with all of my social media and clients and everything. And they all sent out, started sending out DMs and stuff. Um, yeah, I have that line of, like patterns of emails i guess and again same idea if it's like a bright kite or something or you know some like hey random new app to try out it's something not really that complex but i've been trying to let LastPass handle it a lot more for me and uh, so it's a big long strange so it's some crazy strange thing i'll never remember which means i'm completely tied to LastPass, um which means i should probably get a stronger password on LastPass um in the long run uh but i I guess the one i have probably isn't too bad well and and that's it i don't necessarily i like the concept of those products i'll be honest with you they make me nervous because like if that service goes down (laughs) like you can't get into anything you're gonna have a rough time now the good thing is, is you can always say as long as you keep your mail account or and I know I've, I've heard, I mean, and I think it's probably a good idea. People keep keep an alternate mail address that's just for sign-on services that you don't use for anything else. Um, I mean, you can always go on and say, send me a password reset request and, and that kind of thing. Yeah. But if that service goes down, I mean, you're going to, you might be stuck. And you're going to be, I mean, think about it. If your wallet gets stolen, think about you're gonna have to go find the bank numbers, find your credit card numbers, call them all, cancel them, wait for new ones to show up, go get a new driver's license, blah 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 blah. You lose LastPass. I mean, it's just as bad. <laughs> I mean, you're gonna be going back through, and if you lose LastPass and your phone, you just give up. <laughs> yeah, it, it's kind of like how many points of failure do you need? It's like my entire security system is like a dropo. There's only a chance. There, there's a good chance one of your drives will go, but there's less chance of a two or three of them mm-hmm. will go at the same time. So it's kind of the same idea. There's a, there's a chance that this thing will go, maybe that service, but there's less of a chance that that service and your phone and your wallet and this and this will all go at the same time, which will have you con- at that point you should just give up on the internet. Um, <laughs> That's I would just give up. Yeah, yeah. Well, because think about think about how many services now. Here, I set up a new Windows 8 machine, and to sign into the Windows 8 machine, I had to receive a text message. Yeah. <laughs> Xbox is doing similar things. Yeah, now. It's the same, they're using uh, the same. Missy off. hadn't signed in for a while, and it was a pain in the butt to get her back into that thing. You know, mm-hmm. um, every time I go, oh, I want to check out what's on Steam. You know, and I have to go get an email response with a number to log in on that c- computer browser. Not even, not even the software, so I can play a game. Mm-hmm. That browser to go look at my account. You know, uh, it's 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 crazy. It's crazy. Um, and that was an edition of Sorg and Chilla's Security Corner. Exactly. <laughs> it should be a feature, shouldn't it? Um, so tell me, I, I think you have... Uh, I have something that we've kind of reviewed before as my awesome thing of the week. And, okay. Uh, I'm The more and more I have less and less time to play my console, the more and more I am leveraging games on my port- my portable devices, whether it's... An Android tablet, an iPhone, an iPad, whatever. 
Um, I don't always have that capability like I used to to get upstairs and, and just spend hours plugging away at, um, at a console. Um, so having, having the, more of a, a video game capability in the palm of my hand that's more friendly than... I'm not huge on the accelerometer. I want to rotate the device, whatever, spin it around. It, it's cool for a while, but then it gets just gets annoying. And um, so this the the Moga Ace Power Gamepad for the iPhone, um, I think is out for order. You pre-order it online, and it, it's it'll be shipped I think relatively soon. Um, it's a hundred bucks, so it's a little expensive. But now let's take it in in, in two pieces here. I don't know what's what's an, a PlayStation or Xbox controller cost you about fifty bucks? I think so. So it's it's that and it's a backup battery for your phone. So while you're using this thing, it's charging it's charging your phone as well. So I, I think and they they did kind of mimic that and that's it closed down that expands out left to right to then let you put your put your phone in there. It it works with the five S five C iPod Touch, whatever. Okay. Um, so, so anything that has the lightning connector in the bottom, pretty much. Good. So I, I think it's a it's a pretty cool device, and it gets you to that point where, I mean, you're seeing the graphics capabilities of a 64-bit device now. You can really start to push the limits of what a person can do. I mean, let let's just Nintendo DS versus this. Okay, what's going to have better graphics? Yeah, uh, this is the the any of the the iOS devices or no. any Android devices. I was watching some green game trailers on Hulu the other day, and they're showing like the new Zelda game, which looks like it's going to be a fun game. I like, I was like, oh, that's kind of a fun Zelda game. I, I'd be interested in playing that. But when you blew up the graphics, it really just didn't look too hot, mm -hmm. you know. Versus like then you show Infinity, holy crap, Blade Three. Um, and you're like, yeah, yeah, that's my phone, mm -hmm. guys. Um, and you're a video game system, and you're well. You also got to think about this is hardware that iterates every year, too. Versus the 3DS is how old of hardware, and even they they're releasing new iterations, but they're still the same specs. You yeah. know what I mean? The Wii doesn't just because there's a new shape Wii or Wii U, um, that doesn't mean it got better. You know, I, I know Wii U versus Wii U is better, right? You know, but um, but yeah, it, it, well, the problem is I think it's because there's no standard, and, and that is pricey at a hundred bucks, and it kind of needs to be Apple backed and standardized. They're kind of saying, "Hey guys, there's good support for controllers. Go ahead and do it." Uh, it's not going to catch on. It, I, it's not going to capture. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to capture some sort of uh, hardcore iPhone, you know. People, Here, I, think, I think I think I think the and and this is something I've noticed at work with parents with kids. Parents with kids have started to switch off the DS route and move to the iPod Touch. Yes. So they don't have to invest in a phone. Okay. Games are games are free, ninety nine cents or or max four ninety nine. Like I I know one of the guys at work. He's like it was yes the device originally was a little more money. He's like, but I used to reward my kids with for their report cards with a DS game or or and and the DS game was what thirty five bucks thirty five bucks thirty forty bucks. He's like, I can now go get them a ten dollar iTunes gift card, and they think like I can reward them with that every month, and I get so much more out of my kids with doing chores and making good grades and all this other thing. He's like, it was the best be decision. Like, you work your ass off. You guys made smart faces as you want, kid. <laughs> right. But I mean, but and, and they, they created them a, a generic email account just for that device, and they, they, they rotate the devices around. I, I think that you're going to end up eroding the other markets. I mean, look at it this way. I see it when we have friends over that have kids. They all either, none of them want to touch the Xbox. They're after the iPads and even the, the, the Google tablet. Well, you have to share the Xbox. But that was always that was always a problem of contention with me and my cousins when we were younger. But I disagree with that because I have an Xbox downstairs and an Xbox upstairs. Okay. 
and they still don't want it. They still don't. I mean, they'll after a while they'll move to it. Yeah. They'll play for a little while, and then they 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 migrate. But, but back. it's a circle of kids with their own screens. Yeah, and maybe talking about the games, but they're playing their own games, and maybe mm-hmm. some of them connect to each other, right? Yeah, you know. But I, they're but they're all eye devices, right? Mm-hmm. That's that's well, no, because some of them because I have I still, I mean, heck. The one was playing Angry Birds on the HP touchpad, WebOS, <laughs> and another one was playing something, some I don't know if it was a Disney game or something, on the Zoom tablet, and then someone was using the the RT tablet to watch Netflix, but like they don't care, like they do want that personal experience, so they want it in their hand. I don't know if it's always necessary interacting with the person across from them mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but I, I just could really see it interesting eroding that market and and for a parent to say okay i can get them an ipod touch or or something along those lines and one of these controllers or i can go out and get them a handheld ds and an xbox one i i think you're you're quickly going to see the, the, the roles change because the other thing I see in kids is they want to be on Instagram. They want to be on those social networks. I mean, I know another friend of mine at work, his daughter is eight and they iMessage and FaceTime from the, from her iPod touch and his iPhone. So it's also kids want to communicate. And with these devices, there's more communications capability and it's mobile. It, it, it gets them, they don't have to be tied to a TV. Mm-hmm. They can go to a friend's house it's, it's, and, and hit and get back and call back home with FaceTime audio. That's, you know, it, uh, on, the, on the neighbor's Wi Fi. The tethering and everything. Like, remember, remember, like, when the Wii U came out, one of the things they said is, like, well, you can play these games, and if somebody wants to watch the TV, you can go and play it on this tablet. Why are we even starting with the TV? You know? And, like, it, it feels like so many devices already do that the other way. Mm-hmm. You know, your iPad, oh, I can play it here, or I can play it on the TV. Like, I just feel like like there's, there's, they're playing the, oh, it's, again, it's a Nintendo, though, and I feel like they've missed the boat on so much. Nintendo is, is to video games as Microsoft is on mobile phones. Mm-hmm. That they just missed the boat and can't see what everybody else is doing right in front of them to figure that out. You mentioned some more video games here. I think was this one I tweeted too, or because uh, this sounds familiar. I think I was reading this. So How about the which, Xbox. The, so the Xbox is delaying some services. This was their delaying till 2014 the ability to to play on Twitch to broadcast okay. to broadcast your gameplay. Okay, this is actually one I forwarded to our friends at Let's Play later, but I'd like to okay. hear your thought on this real quick as well i will reserve most of my opinion for let's play later tonight so i'm interested to see what twitch brings like i think if microsoft does what they say they're gonna do and it works if i'll give them if it works 75 percent at launch okay i think they have a run for the living room this is which is going to be huge. This is available. This is already available day one on the PlayStation Four, and it has been massive. Right, the ability to record massive. and broadcast. The yeah. Okay. The, 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 yeah. To, the, yeah. To broadcast your video, um, they showed it off, and oh, again, I sent this to the, the Let's Play guys, um, so we'll show it off there. But there are these features. They they showed off one semantic uh, voice search. So I feel like playing an action game. And but this is this but, is just the but, Twitch but, piece. But, but, Sorry, no, no, no. But, but but with that was also the no, you can't get on Twitch TV just yet. It will come early 2014. But what they do have is you record the video. There are some interesting video editing features. So they showed a guy. To, again, we'll show this later. I don't have it queued up. Um, um, taking a piece of his Forza. I presume footage and and doing an edit on the Xbox with his controller. It looks like a pretty slick interface, mm-hmm. kind of dumbed down a little bit, like you expect like iMovie on the iPhone and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But for a controller, um, turn on the Connect 
to do a little bit of footage. So him, like, so he just did this little video of him kind of reacting to it. And I know it wasn't clear if it was video that was actually recording when While he was, he was playing, playing. Okay. or if it's one that he just recorded separately and just cut it in. Um, it automatically goes to your SkyDrive. And from yeah. there, you can do whatever you want. Not streaming, but, and, and they talked about that idea, and, and Twitch TV it was like, yeah, w people are already going and dropping a couple hundred bucks in order to do this already, mm -hmm. so we just wanted to lower that barrier. Right. And now everybody can do it. Uh, Chachi experimented greatly with Black Ops 2, had Twitch.tv and YouTube built in, uh, correct me in the chat room, uh, and that I'm aware of, and again, he can tell me real quick in the chat room, uh, not much success. This is, people just want to do this, and people want to do this easily, and they're going to make this super, super easy uh, to the point, and that's where I think PlayStation, I think, is showing themselves as the console to do this kind of thing because they have a button on the controller. I'm playing. I'm feeling really good how I'm doing in Call of Duty. I hit a button, and I've gone live. That's pretty, that's pretty significant dedication to that idea um and this is like i mean what pewdiepie is like the biggest thing on youtube right uh, this is uh, twitch tv is growing exponentially at this point mm -hmm. um i think they said the streams from playstation 4 which just came out friday uh have exceeded all expectations for them um and, and just imagine when they get Xbox on there too. Now everybody can get on this thing. And um, now, now you know there's going to be some soundtrack in the background from a show, and they're gonna, someone's going to post to YouTube, and then <laughs> everything, every, everybody's going to be blown out of YouTube. Yeah, yeah, like like my <laughs> account, you're, you're feeling, like my account that just I that found thing. just got blown off <laughs> YouTube earlier today because something I probably uploaded in 2006. Um, I don't know, but it's it's an interesting phenomenon, and and it goes to show like you don't need to do like like twitch feels like youtube used to like mm -hmm. yes you can still put god knows what you want to on youtube but the handcuffs are kind of coming on a bit more and more uh twitch now this is definitely very dedicated definitely like well here's video game streaming obviously we have the rights to do this kind of thing um but it's still very diy at home kind of feel to it the, the the thing that worries me and, and what I wanted to bring this up and it goes back to the conversation we were kind of just having is, you know, this is delayed. We're not getting HBO to go at launch. We're not get we're not getting a lot of things that we're used to, but I will say that their their library of stream and big content is much bigger than anything PlayStation has or even claims that they're gonna have in the future. When you look at the the breadth of content video pieces, content, video content. I, I see them microsoft did a really good job they've learned the, the only thing that they're i'm worrying about is that. you're seeing seeing some minor i'm hoping they're minor delays mm -hmm. um but i, I really look forward to, cra crazy kraus and i were talking the other day at lunch you know i can rip out my apple tv my blu-ray player I can rip almost every unit out of my entertainment center and put this in there mm -hmm. and I'm done. Yep. And like if it works as well as that commercial does with the, I don't know what the hell her name was, Jennifer walking up behind the guy watching the soccer game and, and she's like X and it says hi to her and she's like X Xbox load, whatever game. And then like she sits down next to the guy that was watching the sporting event. Like I, th I find a that hysterical, but if that technology works the way they say it's going to, and it needs to work better than Connect does today, mm -hmm. I, I really seeing Microsoft making a push for that living room, and and they're going to beat out the Apples, even if Apple Apple comes out with a, a TV later. They're going to, I mean, obviously they're going to be beat Google TV, uh, Chromecast. Well, what's the point then? I mean, you. Know, It'll almost be as if an afterthought because you know everyone's going to want to integrate. If, if everyone puts an Xbox in their living room and you use the Glass app on and, your Android device or anything and else. This is something I learned this week. In order for you to get an app on Xbox, you have to write for Windows 8. It's so, not an Xbox exclusive thing right. anymore. It's do you know how to do Windows 8? You can write for Xbox now because they have that layer in there now, um, which really opens that up because it was 
hard to put something on an Xbox 360. Mm-hmm. Like, like you had to be a big company to do it. Yeah. Much like I think these companies with Apple TV that I think you want to talk about here. Yeah. So yeah, next on the list. Speaking so of Apple streaming, TV adds Yahoo Screen and PBS. I've heard some really good things about the PBS app. The interesting thing is, so so the PBS app doesn't have Downton Abbey. But there's because Downton Abbey has an exclusive with Netflix. Yes. <laughs> but you have a Netflix app, so as long as you subscribe to Netflix. There you go. Um, but I, no, no, I I think this is yet another iteration of let's let's make a play in the living room. The more content, the more content we can give you, and the more avenues to content, even if it has to be paid for, like Netflix or Hulu Plus or whatever. I just, and, and maybe it's because um, I really enjoy being a cord cutter. I just see this on-demand theory being the way. The easier and easier they make it, the more and more people are going to pick it up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which will drive the cost of cable up, which the more and more people will leave. <laughs> and uh, it'll, it, it could be a very vicious circle. It could be. And yeah. it's not like antenna um, is going to go away because that's like an FCC requirement if you're a... Public, if you're a publicly broadcasted company, then but then they're complaining. They say, "Hey, if Aereo goes through in more places, we're going to take all our good content off of over the air. So what are we going to have left on over but the air?" If they're if they take it off over the air, they lose money. No, they lose local, government and funding. And all those lo- local stations shut down because mm-hmm. they can't. I don't. They can't support themselves without that yeah. that, that content. So the, I don't. I don't see that that yeah. actually occurring. Or do they? Are they all? Do they all turn into my Pittsburgh and this TV and retro TV at that point? Is it all locally? We get all reruns because I had a discussion once with somebody from the local my network TV, mm-hmm. and they said, "You know why we run reruns? Look at the ratings. Sometime they make money. Oh, I'm they sure make they the, do. Do you know why we have old Frasier and Seinfeld and Friends? Because everybody's watching them. How do you think Netflix? <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly if people want to watch it that's why that's why like every that's why g4 tv is still running cops and canceled everything else that was original on there because people watch it and they didn't have to spend much money for it so they're making money mm-hmm. you know we just talked about thor making all these millions of dollars and then best man or was a best man holiday which cost them maybe what 20 or 30 million dollars Beating out, you know, beating it out on a Friday, and they are already making money back for that. Versus, how much exponentially did Thor have to make back, you know, to just pay itself off? You know, same idea with this. We only paid this much so we can get this in syndication, and people are watching it. it versus going and creating new content. So, um, it's funny you talk about this and cord cutting a little bit. I had like a momentary lapse of faith this week in cord cutting because. Yeah. Well, I was looking at the Xfinity app because somebody let me look at their Xfinity app. And I was looking at the content and I kept like looking at it and considering it. And I was, I was like, well, what do they offer? And I started looking at the apps on the Xbox. And I was like, okay, the Fios one isn't so good. They, they let you stream live TV. So that kind of replaces mostly a cable box. Maybe, you know, maybe I should give them cable back just to, just to see what that's like. And then I slapped myself in the face and stopped. Um, because, <laughs> but no, but you, it, though, there's a compelling argument now, I think, um, to a point, because you look at it, like I'm looking at like what X- Xfinity is offering and it's, it is all that stuff. And the reason that I have Hulu, it was, okay, let's hypothetical. Hypothetical. I kind of wanted to have this conversation with him so he can, because I know he's, there's a lot of I told you so's on this. Um, there, there's a, a, just about everything has like streaming to it, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, with Xfinity. Uh, I don't know the ins and outs of what is and isn't. Um, particularly Doctor Who I saw was on there from like the last whatever seasons and ever like all, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> uh, I'm not complaining. I'm making a point. Um, but, shit, I lost my count. Um, but, um, but you look through it, it's like, there's stuff on there, like How I Met Your Mother is on there. So I'm like, oh, I pay for How I Met Your Mother. That's not even Hulu. You know, you look at that. So it's like, well, it's on Netflix. And you start to think about, not the new ones, not oh, the not new the ones. New the ones. point is that like, like next day, typically it'd be on the service. I have an answer for you. I, I can solve all your problems. Oh, no, no, no. Let me, let me explain all the, of like my thinking that went into this. And it was probably late at night when I shouldn't be thinking about financial decisions like this. Uh, and I'm thinking like, okay, like how much do you actually pay for cable over? 
like just paying for the internet like I do, you mm -hmm. know, which I pay 65 bucks. How much more do you, some people pay for it? cable? Some of those packages are like 80 bucks for the pair. It's a trick. I know it's a trap. It's I know it's a trap the whole time. <laughs> and then we get around to the trap part. <laughs> but you think about that. And then you think about, nope, because they're going to get you in there and, and, and then they jack that rate up. For but it's thing. not even that they get you in there. I mean, going through, so I went, I, I, I go the internet only route and I'm, I'm, I'm signing up for my internet for the very first time. We're moving into the house. I'm like, well, we're just going internet. I'm not getting cable. This is ridiculous. Blah, 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 blah. So you sign up and it's like for 10 more dollars, you can have TV. And I'm like, oh, for, well, for $10, I mean, come on now. Why wouldn't I? Mm -hmm. And then for 10 more dollars, <laughs> You can have DVR. <laughs> and then you're wondering, and then for, how did my bill get to $150 again? And then for $20 more, you can get 150 more channels. And then for $10 more, you can get HBO. For the first, and it's free for the first three months, and then it's ten, like $10. I'm like, so I, I'm actually stupid enough. I'm like, well, it's only ten more dollars. And then, the and then you realize, you're done. It's it's like 150 bucks. And then by the time you realize, <laughs> it's two months later, you look at the bill. I don't even watch this stuff. You're in a contract. So here here's my answer to that. Which this does have come with a contract. So I'm I'm gonna be forthcoming with that. Go out and spend the 150 bucks one time expense on a TiVo DVR. Throw it on your antenna. You can record four channels simultaneously, which is like <laughs> wait, wait. one out of you know six what? of the channels you you're going to get. you know how much stuff I pay for? I mean, I, okay, I, I pay for, from Amazon Prime, one, two, three, four programs, three of which are over the air. I pay for Hulu, which means just I conveniently watch, and now I do watch more on Hulu. I watch Daily Show. I watch At Midnight. I watch... Oh, what else from cable? Uh, I, I watch stuff from USA. I watch stuff from uh, FX, uh, say, right? So, I mean, it's Netflix. But, 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 but the majority is we watch Groom, we watch Sleepy Hollow, we watch. No, no but here's the here's, free over the air stuff. So, here's the interesting okay. thing. Okay. So, go out and spend that money, and you're going to, you have to pay for TiVo's service, which so, is 12. Wait a minute. Hold on, though. Time out, which is 12, $12 <laughs> a month. So you're getting, you're paying twelve bucks a month. In that, my TiVo gets upgraded four times a year. Okay. I get software updates four times a year. Okay. I get all my over the air channels. I can record up to four of them at a time. I, there's plenty. Of, there's seventy five hours of recording time. Not only that, but drop one of those things. I don't care which one of them you drop. Right. Well, drop, I can tell you, I, I wouldn't. I'd probably not pay for the Amazon Prime then. So don't pay. But now, so the interesting thing, so the TiVo box integrates with oh, no. amazon prime oh no Hulu plus and netflix oh no and i can stream anything from the tivo to anywhere you have to buy a tivo stream but what what's that it's oh, a little it, box that it, lets you stream it anywhere. It, oh it's like another box it's, it's like, like a hundred dollar it's like a it's like a stream it's box included in the top or, of the line uh, tivo okay but the top of the line tivo doesn't work with antennas yeah, you have to use a cable your... card but why do i need this because i have a chromecast but the cool thing is no, wait a minute though so when you're watching sleepy hollow Mm -hmm. It will actually, and you're watching live TV, right? It's not something that's on another service. I'm not going to watch it live, though. But I'm but never, you're, that's you, okay, my so you're watching. Is, but you're watching no on your pay for cable because I will never. Right. I will but, watch Monday Night Raw, and that was it. Right. So I'm you go into the you. menu. So you go into the menu and you pull up Sleepy Hollow, and you're 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 hitting play, or the the, the show's over, and it's like, do you want to keep this or delete it? Up at the top of the screen, there's four windows. And it says, if you liked this, then you will probably like one of these. And it only shows you content that you have access to. Well, Xbox doesn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> it only like it knows that if you have a Netflix hooked up to it or an Amazon Prime hooked up to it or an, any of those services, it knows what you have access to. And it's not trying to upsell you something. Yeah. And, and not only that, but. It's odd because you get these over you get over the air TV advertisements for coupons like during certain TV shows. It'll be like 
Press the green thumb button if you want a 99 cent coupon for Bounty, the quicker picker upper. Like, because they know you're <laughs> skipping the commercial, so they're inserting their own. I, right? I, I guess, but it, it's really weird because also at the end of the show, when you're like, even if you're watching DVR, it only happens when you're watching live TV, actually, that you get those thumbs up things. That's weird. And if you're, if you watch it DVR, you don't get it during the show, but you get it after the show's over and it'll be like, erase this content keep this content check out this coupon <laughs> too many choices that's that's it but but i'm telling you it, it is so worth it it, it, it huh. i cut the cord and and it, it it's the only thing that actually makes it the easy xbox and I mean, really the xbox is kind of the core of our thing now we're right. reading off the xbox because the chromecast because i just like it's quiet because that Xbox is so freaking loud. Um, old Roku, of course, is upstairs. Um, but I'm, I think I'm moving the Wii upstairs because I'm like, well, this thing's not HD anyways. Let's throw it on the old TV up in the office. And I have a better interface for uh, Netflix and Hulu in the office. You know, seems to make sense. And maybe I'll play some Super Mario Bros. Who knows? Uh, guys, we're going along here. It's time <laughs> to talk about those video games. Uh, and let's play. Uh, if you're here uh, live, we're live Tuesdays, live.sorgatronmedia.com, about 6 p- 6.30 p.m. Eastern. Do we have anything for the calendar in the next week, Chilla? Did we, is there, any, is this just a slow week? It's it's not, you know what, I know there's a couple Windows phones coming out. Yeah. Um. And that's actually all I, I think. Um, and their tablets coming out on I think Verizon and AT and T coming okay. up. Um, I didn't see anything else earth shattering. Obviously, you got the Xbox coming out Friday. PlayStation just launched um, live stream on uh, what site was it? Uh, Polygon is doing live streams tomorrow uh, about the launch. That looks. I was thinking about tuning that on a little bit before before I go to some meetings. So uh, I'm curious. I'm curious. So. And this live stream debate, that, like, that's where I, I, I kind of came up with the thing, because like, they were actually having a, uh, I think Polygon was having a Google Hangout talking about live streaming. Does it, why does it matter to you? You know, because I feel like there's like, I feel like everybody that's talking about video games is in a bubble that none of us actually sits down and broadcasts or watches live streams of video games. So then you're like, who are these people? Just like, who are these people that you Snapchat? I know who you are now, because you Snapchat me. One of them's a cop. That's weird. Um, but anyways, uh, if you have any opinions on any of this stuff, of course, you can drop, like I said, live.sorgatronmedia.com here Tuesday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern. I nearly need to get something to drink. Um, also, at, at AwesomeCast on the Twitter. Um, we're over at sorgatronmedia.com. We can find all the episodes and everything like that on YouTube. Uh, leave comments on there. On Google Plus, on Facebook, go look for the Awesome Cast. On Flipboard. On Flipboard. Ah, we have not been talking about that. Uh, how do they find that? I think it's Flipboard. Just search Awesome Cast awesome on the. Cast. F- we have a magazine. We yeah. have an Awesome Cast magazine. And there's gonna be a lot of content that we didn't cover in there. This oh yeah, week. yeah. So we, I mean, we have we don't even get through half of them, but it's always really good because we have great conversations with these, and you can tell us. Um, is there a commenting function on that, or even you tweet the article back at us and with any? Yeah, comments? you can you can tweet the tweet tweet the article back at us. Um, I've also been trying to tweet out the the shortened flip it link. Yeah, so I I'll be tweet, I uh, once that. I get these in there, just like I did last week, I'll I'll, right. I'll flip that out there. So with all that, thank you guys. You've been our awesome chat room, telling me how wrong I am about cable. Uh, you've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. <laughs>